what is consciousness? Any experience, any hearing, seeing, dreaming, desiring, wanting, uh, tripping, those are all different experiences. The way it feels like to be you know, in love or to be angry or to see something. So not the behavior. So many people confuse consciousness with the behavior associated with consciousness. It's the, the, the phenomenal, the subjective part. Philosophers call this also the qualia, you know, the badness in toothache, the redness in, uh, um, in, in red. That's what, that's what consciousness is. And, and self-consciousness, by the way, because many people think, oh, consciousness, you, wait, you really mean self-consciousness. No, self-consciousness, which is very dominant in adults, it's not really present in young children or babies, that's a subset of all conscious experiences. You know, I know I'm a man, I know what I had for breakfast, I know I'm going to die one day, all of that. Uh, that's just a subset of all possible experiences, although in many of us, the self tends to dominate. People always ask, what's the function of consciousness? Because that's, as biologists, we believe uh, these systems evolved and they only evolved because they do something that's good for the, for the organism. Consciousness may not have been dire directed, selected for, because what gets selected in evolution is behavior. If you behave right, you leave a lot of progenitors behind you. Um, if you behave wrong, you're going to die and you're not going to have any, um, any children, right? And so it's behavior that's, prob that's important for, for, for evolution, not consciousness. Now, interesting, if you look at electric charge, no one in physics asks, well, what's the function of electric charge? It just we find ourselves in a universe where things have positive charge and negative charge. And it may also be for consciousness that consciousness didn't get directly selected for, but certain physical systems, particularly these ones, the most complex piece of highly active matter in the known universe, they have a lot of consciousness as associated with them. But now we have human ingenuity that creates things like brain organoids, right? Will organoids be conscious? And then, of course, a big looming question is what about large language models or robots? But we need a theory because if we just go on our intuition, then your intuition may be very different from my intuition. Functionalism would say if one is conscious and the other one does the same function as the one that's conscious, well, the other one will be conscious too. IT would say no, they're quite different. You have to look under the hood. You have to sort of look into the box, into the gray box, and look at the wiring. Either a theory is true or it's not true, independent of the political. I mean, if we judge quantum mechanics, oh, wait, what are the political implications of quantum mechanics? It just walks around blindly into its doom. Watch the full interview on Patreon, subscribe here for more clips, and check out our sponsor, Dr. Greg Dunn's NeuroArt. Enter the code BRAIN for 10% off at gregadunn.com. Thanks for watching.